Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy of the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to a bloody quick way through Dishonored 2. We're on to chapter 7. Uh, crack in the slab, I think this chapter is called. And uh, yeah, we're at Aramis Tilton's uh, Manor. And this is actually probably one of the coolest levels in the game. So as you can see, the manor is completely destroyed, completely wrecked. But, uh, and we can hear Aramis Tilton himself through this blocked off door. We can't enter this place, so we need to find another way. So let's just head up the stairs and we can just loop around the area. And over here on the left, we can actually just get on top of his room and there's a hole in the floor here. I think, yeah, there we go. And we can talk to Aramis Stilton. Yo, Aramis Stilton? Warm the quilts, will you? And he seems to have lost his mind, but then... Three years ago, something inside Aramis Stilton snapped like a cheap lock. A part of him and a part of this house never left that evening. The Duke's inner circle are still gathered here, setting their grand plan into motion. Delilah's plan. And a part of Aramis Stilton is always here, still breaking. The Void is not exactly a place, and it's much older and stranger than you could ever know. It watches you from within. And at the heart of Stilton's house, the void is leaking through a pinprick left behind by Delilah's little trick. Even magic is perverted here, and things don't work like they should. Take this. Imagine it's a kind of timepiece. Go and watch the Duke and Delilah. See for yourself what they did. And there we go. We get the timepiece. Like it's going to be cold tonight. So there we go. We can use the timepiece to travel between the past and the present. Changing timelines to circumvent obstacles and escaping our enemies. You can't change timelines when an obstacle occupies your destination. Time passes in both timelines regardless of which you occupy. And changes made in the past have consequences in the present, which what which is what makes this uh, mission so interesting. So normally, this um, mission is a bit weird because you lose your powers and it's debilitating that way. But you do get a timepiece which allows you to teleport between time slots. So now we're in 1849. And we need to get out of this room, but we can't because the door is locked and uh, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. And we can actually take the calendar here from to uh, have a bit of a souvenir from this time period. I'm actually going to eat up as well. Ooh. So everybody in the conspiracy is here right now in this time slot. If you go back be just back in this old dilapidated ruin. So actually it makes you more powerful than it would otherwise because we can switch between time uh, lines to just get uh, away from enemies and the like. So if you just go outside the door and go here, we can actually just start taking out guys before they get back into this main area. Oh god. So now, for example, I can actually just go back here and check what this guy is doing. So he's just looking at the corpse. So if I just go back, I can actually just backstab him and break the rest of the door, apparently. So there we go. And then I think there's one more guy around here somewhere. No, no, there's not. So just to keep us safe, I'm going to stay in this timeline and check out where everybody is. Because we're going to use the timepiece as a bit of an easy way to stealth kill everybody since we're not restricted by anything like that. And I think there's supposed to be one guy over there, but I think I was quick enough to just kill everybody off. So if the timepiece is black, you can't actually teleport because there's something in your way. So, okay, I'm just going to unfold that again. So there's two people talking here. Might as well take them out because they're going to blabber to other people otherwise. And there we go. Don't think there are any more enemies around here, but this door is locked, so we need to find the master key. The master key 
is if I recall correctly, over here. Because this is, yeah, this leads Don't back to the guard room. Present based on what I do here tonight. So this is an interesting room. You can actually get the key without alerting anybody. Um, just because of the way this is set up. Uh, I'm actually gonna... Do this bloodily, of course. So let's kill this guy first. And switch back to the timepiece. Go down. And fold the timepiece. And then... Kill this guy off, teleport back, and then check out where this guy is. He's just right over here. Is that everything? Because usually, yeah, there we go. There's the last guy. He just went through me. And there he goes. So the type piece makes you pretty much unkillable. Uh, one of these guys had the key. I think it's this guy. No, it's not. Ah, there's a the key. Didn't even have to kill anybody for that, but still, still, no half measures, right? And then we have a vault. We can actually get in the vault in the older time uh, period. And, uh, but then we have a statue in our way, where we can go back. And now we're inside of the safe. So we're inside of the safe just by cheating a bit and using uh, time to just go in and then go back. Uh, there's a bit of money inside of the safe as well. Along with bullets and a fancy new upgrade for the gun, I think, which is the ultimate upgrade for the gun. Let's swap that, and that drops down the statue, which means that it's now broken off from its pedestal and it can't be moved towards that wall. Which means that if we oh, wait a second, that if we go back, that the statue is still in its original place because it couldn't have been moved. And that's how the time period actually changes a bit. And then we get towards our next objective. Because I think that we can get... Yeah, we can get through here because there's a hole in the wall. Don't need any sleeping darts because I never actually use sleeping darts. If you go underneath the desk... We can go back and now we're inside of this cage looking thingy. And we can go in here. Then our next bit of uh, puzzle is that in this room there's a blood fly nest but you can see kind of that the blood fly nest originated from a dog corpse so if we go back we can see the dog lying here and somebody hasn't taken care of the dog so if you just open up this boiler carry the wolfhound and drop the wolfhound corpse in this thing close it up and burn up the corpse we can actually just go back and that removes it completely. And it also allows us to read the code of the safe, which is 238. Go back again, and we can enter 238. Uh, safe codes are actually randomized in this game, so every time you get here, the safe codes will be different. And that's 10 more coins. Uh, and then the door, I think, is locked. But if we just go back to the present, we can actually get over here, I think. Yeah, now we're in the open area, so um, we're going to have to be a bit more careful. There's a lot of guards here, but just keep in mind that I can actually just move back if I want to. There we go. And then I'm actually going to go back, because I know there's a few dogs in the present here. There we go. We can actually just kill those with a single crossbow bolt. Let's get back to the timepiece. Oh, that that's a... Did that guy just seriously not notice me? What the? Oh, destination blocked. So now we can check what this guy is doing. And he just went over here. And go back again. Do need to be careful to not lose sight of what I'm doing here as well. Because there's of course a few things around here as well that might give me a bit of trouble. But still, I'm an all-powerful time gold at the moment, so uh, let's just murder everybody. There we go. There we go, another veteran in the heart. And I think that clears out the lower floor. Now, we need to get to the upper floor. But I just want to take out the alarm. And the alarm is supposed to be... Oh. Wait, the wire did run towards here. Do need to be careful because there's more... Oh! Oh, right. 
We can actually get to Aramis Stilton's backyard already. From here. Because we need to get to his backyard to have a little... Not chat with him, but... We need to find... Oh, there we go. Security panel. We wire that. Because uh, we need to get the code to the door where Delilah, etc. is just hiding out. Um, there's two guys at the door, if I'm not mistaken. It'd be easy if we could... And just go back. Apparently everybody was scared and just... Oh. Go like this. Murder his ass. And go back again. And I'm actually gonna have to take out these nests. There's a nest keeper here as well, but if I just keep safe, I just blow up all the nests, that should be fine. So the nest keeper is just freaking out at the moment. And let's just kill this guy. Yeah, me again. I'm back away. The nest keeper is gonna start freaking out. This guy is also very, very agitated. Um, I do have an incendiary bolt, so let's just take out this guy with that. There we go. So that's pretty much everybody, I think. So I can just go over here and through the door that I want to go to. To the backyard. The backyard. So we have one soldier on the left in the past. Okay. Let's just do this. Get past this guy and go back. And there we go. So the easiest way to take care of the code. The code is right over there. But um, indeed. So if we just move to the present. You can see this place is still the shithole that it is. Uh, but it's also, I think there's a lot of hounds walking this area. Drop on top of the dogs. I think there's about three of them. So if I just keep going up again and just airbomb the dogs, that should be fine. There we go. Another dog down. I think that might actually be enough. Because I don't need to go down. Because I just need to be here. Right here. Now we're right behind Aramis Stilton. So we can check out the study door, which is 471. And then you can actually take out Aramis Stilton if you want to. But we're not going to do that because Aramis Stilton is actually a pretty nice guy, as we're going to see in a second. So let's get back up. There we go. Back through the lower door. Where are you hiding? So there's actually a few ways you can actually play this. Um, you could either kill him, which causes the mansion to go into the ownership of the government. Uh, which makes the present also this lovely house. Because, you know, he's no longer there to just let it fall into disrepair which means we actually get a lovely house in the present which we can't do right now but you could have done but that also makes it more difficult because the present will be guarded with guards as well which it is not now which makes it easier for us to have a safe place to go back to every time the other thing you can do is knock him out which kind of has the same effect other than he's of course alive he's of course alive so Aramis Stilton is still alive and that causes you to uh, also have the fancy house in the present but of course under the rule of Aramis Stilton. So let's get back and enter the code of 174 I think it was. It was 471, sorry, 471 and that just opens up the door and we get into some really weird shit. Things seem to be the worst here. The two times are overlapping now somehow. So we can be detected in this area because we're kind of in the middle of time zones here, as you can see with the gray overlapping the normal Welcome colors. Again to my house. Let's get this over with. So we have Kirin Jindosh, has never been done. Dr. Hypatia, Brianna Ashward, and the Duke. If anyone has any doubts, set them aside now. This defies rational understanding. It's the frayed edge when natural philosophy crosses over into something else. Yes, I can feel it. We risk madness. The more I hear, the more I think this is ill-advised. Who wants to speak with the dead? If this Delilah really was killed or banished from the world, what if she's lost her mind? Delilah is stronger than before. The Duke and I have heard her voice whispering to us. And now it's time 
So take your positions. So Delilah was still gone. She's dead. She's just gone into the void. And we know she came back somehow. And that this ritual has something to do with it. And also made her immortal. So nice uh, combination there. So let's take a look at this. By the stars. This is more exciting than any orgy I've ever attended. Wait. Wait. You can't really. Idiot. So Aramis Stilton is panicking and he's stepping a bit back outside of the circle. Here, and Delilah appears. From the cold. From forever. How curious. It seems to have worked. And there we go. My spirit is safe now inside this thing. Luca, you must lock it away. I can still see the insides. One has become a stone, the other reforged and marked by the one whose eyes are black. Poor Aramis. I feel obliged to take care of him out of loyalty to my father. Wait. You are hidden, but I know who you are. I know when you are. You've come to watch me return, and someday I'll come for you. The void beyond the world is strange. So somehow Delilah knew we were here. All I've seen. But she did put her spirit inside of that statue, and now that's gonna just play again, which we don't need to see again. So now we know that her spirit is trapped into that statue, and as long as it's still in there, Delilah herself, her body, is immortal. And it's also the ritual that caused Aramis Stilton's madness. So sadly, we're not gonna save Aramis Stilton, we're just gonna leave him to rot inside of this, uh, this building. Um, but yeah, now we can actually just get out. But you know what? On the way out, why not kill? Huh? Why this door not? was supposed to be closed. It was. So there's somebody on the other side that actually saw me right now. Hello. And now we can actually just, if I want to, just nip back into the other timeline, but I'm not going to, because everybody in the house is dead. So let's just enjoy this lovely violin while we just walk outside the door hmm. like ouch that guard isn't getting here anytime soon is he no he's not so there we go outside of the door look at this we never saw the prompt okay yeah that's that's a good reason why we didn't saw the prompt because it's uh filled with guards and dogs which we don't really need if we're in the other time zone so back to the present and let's get out of the dust district so there we go let's head outside of the oh nope Oh yeah, right, right, never mind. There we go, going back down. You thought this was over, didn't you? Kind of forgot about this thing. And I must apologize, I've called this guy the stranger like three times already, but this, it's, it's of course the outsider. Look Not that it really you. matters. A crumbling island at the very edges of the void. It's time for more, some more exposition. But this one is special. It's the place where my throat was cut 4,000 years ago. This is where my life ended, and where it began again. It's where they made me. This part of the void feels older. So this is kind of uh, explaining how the outsider was created. The end, I thought I'd find a way to escape. I fought, but the rooms only cut my skin, so I went limp. And then the knife touched my throat, and I knew I'd waited too long. The blood ran out, and I became a god. Now you know Delilah's secret. At the end of her days, she drifted to the void and should have been lost forever. But her will and cunning are second to none. She found this place, the island in the void where I became what I am. It changed her, and she discovered a way to draw from it. Tapping into the power here. Delilah is a part of me now, and I don't like it. So she abused her powers, and uh, yeah, she angered the outsider, which is why we got uh, well, got the the possibility to get powers, so we could take her out. You have to give Delilah credit. She tore out a piece of herself and hid it away inside a thing made of bones. 
She's made herself immortal. If you want to kill Delilah, you're going to have to find her spirit and give it back to her. Reaching it won't be easy, but what comes after that might be the hardest thing you will ever have to do. So there we go. The hardest thing we'll ever have to do. The world contains more mysteries than I imagined. And there we go. So that's actually weird, because the area we saw before we got sucked out was not this room. Very strange day. So yeah, now all that needs, uh, all that remains, is for us to just go back to Sokolov and the skiff, because I think Megan isn't even here anymore. Uh, and since we killed all the guards, this uh, shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, this this hallway looks horrible, by the way, just filled with corpses. But uh, going down. We actually get back to Sokolov quickly. Are you ready to leave? Yes, we are, Sokolov. On my throat. Yeah, it must, because uh, you're an old man. Yes, I paid a visit to Paolo and the Howlers, and I've been to Stilton's house. We can go. There we go. 18 kills, 20... Wait, 18 hostile skills and 2 civilians killed. 28 body detections and 19 normal detections. But for some reason, we're almost close to stealth, which is not normal. Duke Luca Abel tore down the old palace in Karnaka and built himself a new one. A monument to his ego. Whether he knows it's coming or not, I'm here to make him pay for everything he's done. I'm going to show him what happens to those who turn traitor to the Empire. After tonight, the Duke will either be dead or deposed. Depending on how this plays out. Whatever happens to Sir Konos in the aftermath is his fault, not mine. I've got to get inside, take care of the Duke, and find a way to steal Delilah's soul. There we go, our next objective laid out for us. Again, twofold, we need to kill the Duke and take care of Delilah's spirits, which we're gonna do with uh, something of our own. You can't. I need you. I have stayed too long. Find Elias' spirit. Trap her with this cage of dead flesh. Set me free. I don't understand. You will very soon. So the soul of Emily's mother is trapped inside the heart, but we can swap it out for the Lilas. Which, of course, means that we're going to lose the soul of Emily's mother, the Empress. Um, so yeah, that's it for Chapter 7. Next up, we're going to kill the Duke himself. Because, uh, yeah, we, if you remember the diorama we saw before, we've killed pretty much everyone aside from the Duke and the Lila herself. So uh, next up, the Duke. But uh, before that, I'd like to thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of A Bloody Quick Way, True Dishonor 2. Goodbye.